Hey guys, back to break down some MCQs. This week is on simulation session one. You're now into the week or weekend long sessions with the assessment at the end. When I first saw the exam for Sims 1, I was surprised. These are way different exams than C1 to C4. They're now majority long worded scenario based questions that you need to be prepared for. These questions can be extremely difficult for people that struggle with huge questions and huge answers. So we're back at it. Simulation Simulation Session 1 Exam Master MCQ Video Breakdowns with me. As usual, if you're looking for additional support to pass these exams first try or to crush a retake, look to my Exam Master mini course in the description below from C1 all the way to Sims 2. More on that later in the video, but let's just dive right into the computer and break down these multiple choice questions. Okay guys, we're just at question one here. If you've never seen me break down these questions before, we just go through them. I go through the questions, I go through the answers, what's right, more importantly, what's wrong and why it's wrong. And we just break them down. And I talk on my fundamentals and the fundamentals I used uh, during these exams, right? I utilize the cursor. I always just, it just it's just good for, your, good for your brain to just put the cursor where you're reading and hover over correct answers, eliminate wrong answers, right? Uh, just smart fundamentals like that. And I'll touch on a few. Okay, let's just basically dive right into a top left deep breath. One. You as a salesperson are working with your seller clients, Hillary and Steve, to sell their property. You have decided to hold offers until a specific date. Okay, this happens. On offer day, you have four offers and are discussing them with your clients. What are your clients' options when it comes to having competing offers? Okay, fantastic a spot to be in, in the real world when you have multiple offers. A, when there is multiple offers, a good practice is to counter the lower offers to possibly get a better price while you still have high offers. This is something you 100% would never want to do. Okay, so you never want to counter two offers at the same time. This would be a massive, massive problem if both were accepted. As you could imagine, you've now sold the house twice. Do not do that. They can accept uh, more than one offer if the irrevocable periods allow for it. You just, you cannot accept <laughs> multiple offers at the same time, right? It doesn't matter about the irrevocable period at all. So, right, just, there's only one option. <laughs> they can accept one, counter or reject them all. You, of course, cannot counter them all, right? Because like just mentioned before, you will have sold a property twice if two people agree to your counter, right? On to D, they can accept. And again, I'm just moving the cursor because I'm eliminating it, right? So if it was A, I'd leave it hovered over, right? Uh, D, and if you get it to the end, still read it though. They can accept one, counter one, or reject them all. This is the correct answer, right? So, and I have these little notes that I love going over. So um, just, just stuff that like you can learn from from, um, it's like, a, it gives you a little extra help. Like in my exam master mini courses, I have all of these questions, but then underneath it, I have explanations, right? So they're, they're way better this way. So basically having multiple offers, give the seller leverage, right? Just, just more like think in real world, right? Using the irrevocable times related to each offer, the time, the time can, you can use this in your favor, right? You can counter one for a shorter period of time, right? For instance, you can, if you have these four offers, you're going to counter one offer that's irrevocable on your end until 8 p.m., right? And then once that doesn't go through, you can now do another one in the same evening, right? So stuff like that, you it, you definitely have the leverage when you have multiple offers, but as far as the exams go, right? This is your answer. It's going to come up. Stuff like this is going to come up and just don't get tricked by any means. You can accept one, counter one, or reject them all. Answer D and move on. Uh, two, top left. You've been searching for properties with your buyer clients, Steve and Nancy, and they have now found their perfect dream home. You have written an offer and are explaining the pre-printed clauses in the agreement of purchase and sale. What statement is true about the title clause in the agreement of purchase and sale? Perfect. Okay. So off to A. The title clause is the requisition date that usually happens one or two weeks before closing. Okay. So the title search date happens one or two weeks before closing. The lawyers check title, right? This is not, uh, this is actually not the title clause. That's the title search clause, two separate ones. Uh, B, the title clause indicates that the seller and the buyer agree that there is no representation or warranty of any kind that in the near future intended use of the property by the buyer is or will be lawful except stated except stated in the like basically uh this is a future use clause essentially this is not the title clause um like when they say lawfully accepted stated that means you you indicated that it was a single family uh residential for instance right and if they change it into something else i have a really good video okay so like 
it, I'll, I'll link it right now. Um, if you haven't watched it, this is my APS video, complete breakdown of preprinted clauses. Uh, watch that for sure. And in my exam master mini courses, we go deep on this stuff. Okay, see, the title clause provides that the title to the property is good and free from all registered restriction charges, liens, and encumbrances, except that it's otherwise the run of the land. Perfect. And again, if nothing sounds wrong on an answer, always leave. Or if you don't know, or if nothing sounds wrong, leave the cursor hovered over for now and utilize the process elimination, right? Stuff that runs with the land, if that sounds like it could be the confusing part. This is just normal stuff. Like it could literally be a sewer system. It could be pipes. It could be cables, phone lines. Those are just normal uh, stuff that runs with the land, right? In normal circumstances. Um, but I leave it hover over and then read D. The title clause is the transfer of name that happens when a property is bought and sold and is for the protection of the seller. This is That is incorrect. And we know our answer is C. And again, look to that video if you want to break it down. It, that video is everything I would have wanted while I was, you know, even established agents go through it because they don't know the agreement of purchase and sale. Okay, C, answer and move on. Uh, three, top left deep breath. As a salesperson working with homeowners that are looking to buy, you might find the perfect property and want to put in an offer. You, They may want to include in the agreement agreement, uh, a condition of the sale of their own property. Okay. Interesting. What will you have to take into consideration about a condition upon the sale of the buyer's property? Yeah, this is something you want to know for real world and could be on the exams as well, right? A, according to Reba, soon to be Tressa, right? So if you're watching it, um, and sorry, switch to Tressa, Tressa, same thing. Well, not same thing, a couple of changes, but, uh, for the purposes of this, it's the same. Uh, when working with a buyer client and including a condition of buyer sale of buyer's home, you must include an escape clause. Okay, so look for those words. Tricky word right there, must. When you see these, these words, just like have it like trigger a little bit in your mind. Look a little bit deeper when you see this word must. Of course, it's not a thing. Like Reba doesn't must. You don't have to include an escape clause according to Reba, right? So I would eliminate that. Uh, B, the condition of the sale of the buyer's property is usually a shorter condition in length as the seller may not be willing to wait for it to sell. Doesn't even make any sense, does it? Because first of all, it should, it's a longer condition. So we know it's a longer condition because it could be 30 to 60 days, right? Um, it's on a five day home inspection, right? Because you got to sell a house, right? So this would be incorrect. Move on to C. To make the buyer's offer more acceptable to the seller, the buyer can insert an escape clause. Okay. Nothing seems wrong here. So right now you're they're saying that it'd be more acceptable if we inserted an escape clause. Okay. All right. So we've hovered over. Uh, D, the seller is less likely to accept an offer with a condition of the buyer's home sale if it contains escape clause. Okay, and this is just going to be up to you to learn today if you don't know what escape clause is, because it basically is coming down to those two, isn't it? Um, and we know, I know, and we can go over this, that the escape clause is in the benefit of the seller. They would want one. And if you start seeing this in the real world, and let's go over a bit of a note. I like these notes. They definitely help. And you can uh, screenshot this note if needed, just to understand escape clauses, because they're going to come up in uh, the real world. Escape clause provision in a condition of sale of the buyer's home are beneficial for the seller, right? The condition of the sale of the buyer's property can require a longer period, like mentioned, to make the longer conditional time of the buyer's offer more acceptable to the seller. The buyer can insert an escape clause. This clause would allow the seller to continue offering the property for sale and to accept a second offer during the conditional period of the first offer, right? So things have to happen, right? It sounds strange right now, right? Accepting offers, what this sounds weird, but it's all part of it, right? The second offer would be conditional upon release from the first offer, right? So as per the escape clause, to release the first offer, the seller would need to go back to the first buyer and explain that they would now need to decide whether to waive the condition and continue the transaction or release the seller from it. And the escape clauses usually indicate a period of time, 24 to 72 hours for the first buyer, right? The first buyer to kind of make their decision, right? They're like, we haven't sold our house yet, uh, but we really love this. And we maybe they have like, right, they don't need the money. Like there's there's people that don't actually need the money, right? In this particular case, they probably would because it's conditional on their house, but it would be up to them. And most likely to be safe, you know, you have to explain this to your, your clients to be safe. You would have to release the other person to a certain extent, which is in the escape clause. And, and then, then now they would sell it to the, the new people. And you get 24 to 72 hours to make you decide that. Usually it's probably more like 24 because they want to, the sellers will want the process to keep moving on. Okay, guys. Um, yeah. So you'd want to answer here. What are we? We are C, right? To make the buyer's 
offer more acceptable to the seller, the buyer can insert an escape clause. C, answer and move on. Perfect. Okay, so there's no fourth question here. If you've seen my other stuff, I always do four, four questions. This time I decided just to put up a 10. Just screenshot if you need to. You know what, I'll, I'll, I'll put this in the description below as well so you have it. But basically, these are 10 good questions topics that are going to come up on uh, the Sims 1 exam, right? And then even throughout, you're going to see this stuff into C4 and Sims 2 as well, but basically read by the code of ethics, soon to be trusted in the code of ethics. Client versus customer, right? Soon to be client versus self-represented party, right? So whenever you're watching this, if that's changed, right? I'll have videos on that. All of my exam master mini course, uh, basically every single question, every single all of my notes, it's all waiting to be imp imported type thing. I'm just waiting for the switch. And then basically it's going to take me a day and it's all going to be in there, right? Because um, some of these changes are great. Uh, multiple representation is soon to be designated representation, which is fantastic. Um, and don't worry about that stuff right now. You, if you, Depending where you are, you know what I mean? If you're just left-hand side, just left-hand side. Uh, which clauses to add? Competing offers, disclosure of remuneration, discounts, representation agreements, customer service agreements. And again, customer service agreements are soon to be gone on uh, replaced by assistance um offers in general and counter offers notice of fulfillment amendments waivers mutual releases and what types of conditions like precedent uh subsequent so this true condition precedent stuff like that so good short list here guys um i just wanted to replace instead of doing a fourth question for sims one just add these in just for maybe a little, maybe a little bit more support mix it up a little bit okay guys we'll see you right at the computer i really hope that helped guys and as mentioned if you're looking for that additional support look to my exam master mini courses in the description below it's mini notes mini quizzes my exact fundamentals i use to pass all exams first try and in four and a half months i do video break breakdowns similar to this, but more in depth on the four types of questions you may see on the exams. Those links in the description below are also value links for the YouTube family for the time being. If you're new here, join our Humber College Real Estate Facebook group. That link will be in the description below as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll put the value link for Sims 1 right here. I'm Callum Moore, eXp Realty Real Estate Broker here in Ontario. And if you have any questions at all, you can DM, email, comment on this video. I get back to everyone. Everyone. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.